Welcome to biology. In this video, we are continuing onward with our biochem unit. We're going to talk a little bit about the periodic table, isotopes, and compounds. The periodic table is read left to right, just like a book. And the periodic table is your most useful tool when we are doing any kind of chemistry or biochemistry. Now each row in the periodic table tells you a little bit about the number of energy levels for that particular type of element. And the columns tell you a little bit about the number of valence electrons. Now, in general, the number of energy levels is smallest if the particular element is found at the top of the periodic table and there are more energy levels as you go down and the number of valence electrons, there's fewer on the left-hand side and more on the right-hand side. Now, what is an energy level? What is a valence electron? Well, when you take a chemistry class, you will learn all about energy levels, but to simplify it down, when we're talking about energy levels and valence electrons, we're talking about the electrons that are flying around the outside of the atom. So you have the nucleus in the center, the nucleus is made of protons and neutrons, and you have electrons flying around the outside. The valence electrons is what we're really going to focus on in this course. Now the valence electrons are the number of electrons in the outermost ring. So we have a sulfur atom here on the screen, and you can see the outermost ring of sulfur has six dots on it. And that means that there are six valence electrons for sulfur. Just a little bit of a review of the parts of the individual elements, so the squares of the periodic table. We have the atomic number at the top. Remember the atomic number is equal to the number of protons and it is also equal to the number of electrons in the individual atom or in that particular element. Then you have the one or two letters that are really big, and that is the element symbol. So capital X, lowercase e for xenon. Notice it's not capital X, capital E. It's always that lowercase if there's a second letter. And that comes into play when we are looking at chemical equations. And at the bottom of the square, we have the atomic mass. Now the atomic mass is the larger in terms of value of the two numbers. And remember, the atomic mass is the total number of protons and neutrons added up together. It represents kind of the average mass or weight of an individual atom of that element. But you'll notice that this is not a round number. It's not just 131. It's 131.293. And that's because we're looking at an average. That means that not every single atom of xenon weighs exactly the same. And that's because sometimes xenon has an extra neutron. So sometimes an individual atom weighs 132 instead of 131. And when you have forms of an element with a different number of neutron, we call those isotopes. So isotopes are atoms of the same element that have the same number of protons in the nucleus, but they have a different number of neutrons. So different isotopes of an element have the same properties because the properties are associated with the number of protons, but when you have more neutrons, you have more mass. So the number of electrons is not changing, the number of protons is not changing, the only thing that changes with an isotope is the number of neutrons. Now if we look at the element number one, which is hydrogen, you can see that hydrogen can come in three different forms. We have protium, which has one proton, one electron, and zero neutrons. Or we could have deuterium, one proton, one neutron, one electron. Or we could have tritium, one proton, two neutrons, one electron. 
all three of these are just different forms of the same element. And some just have more mass, some have less mass, but they have the same properties. We can look at carbon. Carbon also comes in three typical forms. We have carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14. All three of these versions have six protons, and that's because the atomic number for carbon is six. But the number of neutrons changes. When we write out an isotope for carbon, it would be C-12 because the atomic mass is 12, but our element is still carbon. So C-12 tells us there are six protons because the atomic number for carbon is six, but there are six neutrons because 12 minus six gives us six. Carbon-14 is another form of carbon. It's a different isotope. Carbon still has six protons because the atomic number is six, but for this particular individual atom, the mass is 14. So 14 is the mass of protons and neutrons together. 14 minus our atomic number of six gives us eight. So six protons, eight neutrons. So isotopes can be radioactive. So some isotopes have very unstable nuclei, so that's nucleus. And that nucleus breaks down at a constant rate over time. Now, radioactivity is super duper dangerous. It is nothing to play with. But scientists have found a way to harness that radioactivity so it could actually be useful. Now, scientists are able to determine the age of rocks and fossils by analyzing what isotopes are found in them. Because we know that these isotopes break down at a constant rate over time, scientists just look at the rocks and fossils and look for what isotopes are remaining, and they can determine how old that rock or fossil actually is, which is really, really fascinating. Scientists are also able to use that radioactivity to treat cancer. And that's because radiation actually kills cells. So if they can target that beam of radiation to only hit those cancer cells, then you're able to kill off the cancer, which is kind of the goal of cancer treatment. Now, radioactivity also kills healthy cells. So the goal with cancer treatment is to get rid of the cancer cells before the radioactivity starts attacking the healthy cells. Radioactive isotopes are also used to kill bacteria in food. A pretty common example is actually spinach it gets passed through some radiation, and that's because the bacteria has a very thin cell membrane that the radiation is able to pass through really quickly and it kills off the cell, so the bacteria is no longer going to make you sick but the cell wall around the plant does not allow that particular form of radiation to go through it, so it's able to kill off the bacteria and your food is still safe to eat. So again, super useful. So compounds are the next topic within this video, and a compound is a substance formed by chemically combining two or more elements, and these are combined in definite proportions. So that means that in water, for every one oxygen, you have two hydrogen, and that's why it's called H2O. We just don't put the one next to the O. So H2O is water. Carbon dioxide, what you exhale, is CO2. For every one carbon, there are two oxygen attached. And then another common compound would be NaCl, or sodium chloride, because Na is sodium, Cl is chlorine. So for every one sodium, you have one chlorine. Now what's really fascinating is these compounds have properties that are different than the individual elements that make them up. So let's look in at sodium chloride. Now sodium Na is a metal, and you don't really want to eat metal. Cl or chlorine, that's a poisonous gas that will kill you. But when they are combined with one sodium for one chlorine, we get NaCl, which is table salt. Now table salt 
is not a metal and it is not a poisonous gas. It is something you put on your food pretty regularly. So compounds have a different property than the individual elements that make them up. So that's pretty fascinating. If you take sodium chloride table salt and are able to separate the sodium from the chlorine, they return to their original properties. So that's, again, really fascinating. So let's do a little bit of a brain check. See if you can pause the video here. Can you identify out of these eight items which ones are compounds, which ones are elements, and which ones are isotopes? So go ahead, pause the video, see if you can figure this out. So all of the compounds would be something that has two or more elements combined together. So when we look at this list, number one, number two, and number seven are all compounds. An element, that is something you can find on the periodic table all by itself. So an element would be numbers three, five, six, and eight. Those are all elements. And finally, an isotope is a different version of an element, and we write those by having the element dash the new atomic mass. So the isotope would be H-2. Now I know this was a lot of information in this video. Please go back and re-watch it and check your understanding to make sure that you really understand all of these topics before moving on to the next part of this unit. Please send me all of your questions, comments, thoughts, reaction, feedback, and I will address all of those as soon as I possibly humanly can. And as you watch this, I really hope that you are able to learn something.